know, to, to look at this camera back here and to, you know, thank Big Daddy for giving me this opportunity. But, you know, he's not driving, so, you know, I'll look at him and say, thank you for this opportunity. I don't take it lightly. It's always a great opportunity to be able to preach from the pulpit and preach from God's Word. Uh, Mark chapter 5, we're going to start reading in verse 21. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. It says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and uh, she shall live. And Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garments. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole." And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples saying unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for this great opportunity to be able to come to church. And I do pray and ask, O oh Lord, that you just use me to be your messenger boy tonight. May you bound the devil. May you help us to be able to leave church tonight closer to you than when we came. And we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I love reading Mark chapter 5. It's such an encouraging passage to me. And I'm praying and hoping that tonight I will be able to be a blessing and encouragement to you. I'm truly praying that this passage will be an encouragement and a blessing to you tonight. But if we had time, I would have loved to start reading at the beginning of chapter 5. And we see at, at chapter 5, verse 1, Jesus has crossed over to the other side. He's gone uh, to the country of the Gadareans. And we see he's there, and Jesus walks off of the ship. And as he walks off the ship, a crazy man sees him. And we see that this man is, is crazy. The Bible does not say specifically that he is crazy but it says that he is running around, he's naked, he's living in the cemetery, and that people say he is not in his right mind because he has an unclean spirit in him. So even though the Bible does not say he's crazy, I would think that's pretty crazy if you're running around, living in the cemetery, cutting yourself, and you're not in your right mind. But here's this man, and I think it's so amazing that in verse 6, the Bible says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And verse number 7 says, And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? How is it that this crazy man knew who Jesus was? I began thinking about that. There are so many theologians and philosophers and people that have gotten so many degrees. They know more than you and I, but they don't know who Jesus is. But here's this crazy man which everybody is saying he's not in his right mind. He's living in the cemetery. He has these unclean spirits living in him, but he knows who Jesus is. But we see that this man has a problem. He knows he has the unclean spirits living within him. And we see that this man, he runs and he worships Jesus. Many times when the Bible says that they worship Jesus, it means that they came to the feet of Jesus. So we see this, this man whose name is Legion, he comes to the feet of of Jesus, And we know the story. Jesus casts the, the, the demons out. But I want us to see that Jesus changed this man's life. And I'm so glad that Jesus is still in the life-changing business. I'm so glad that when you and I trusted in Jesus Christ, He changed our life. And we see He changed this man's life. He changed him from being a crazy man 
to being a man in his right mind. He changed him from being a man running around to a man sitting down. He changed him from being a man naked to a man clothed. He changed him from being a man who was just running around wild in the cemetery to a man sitting down talking to Jesus. You see, Jesus can change your life and Jesus changed this man's life. And we see as Jesus continues on, he leaves the, the crazy man the man uh, at the Gadareans, and we see the, another individual that Jesus encounters. And we see that in the passage we already read in verse 22, he meets this man, Jarius. And we see Jarius is another individual that had a problem. He's different than the crazy man. He's not running around wild, naked, cutting himself, not in his right mind. No, Jarius is a well-respected man. Right. He is well-known in the town. Right. He, he's in a place of leadership. He's successful. He's in a place of power. He's totally different than the crazy man. But we see Jarius has a problem. In verse 23, it says that, uh, And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. You see, Jarius was a powerful, successful man, but all the power and money could not save his little daughter right. from death. And you see, Jarius had this great problem, but he didn't go to the doctor. He didn't go to the fake physicians. Right. No, he had a great problem, and he knew the one person that could solve his problem. Sure. He went to Jesus' feet. Yeah. Now, are you starting to see the trend here? The crazy man, he had a problem, and he went to Jesus' feet, and Jesus helped him. We see Jarius had a problem. He knew that nobody else could heal his daughter, Amen. but he had heard of Jesus. Amen. And he came to Jesus' feet, and he said, Jesus, please come and heal my daughter. And I love what Jesus says in verse number 24. Uh, Jesus said, uh, and, and 24 says, and Jesus went with him. Oh, I love that. Amen. Isn't that just like our Savior? Amen. Jesus went with him to go and save his daughter. And aren't you so glad when you're in your problem, when you're in your trial, when you have your issue, Jesus is going to be right there with you. He doesn't just say, hey, read your Bible. Hey, come to church. Hey, tell other people about me. No, he says, whatever you're going through, I'm going to go through it with you. And I think that's so encouraging tonight that know that, to know that whatever you are going through, Jesus is going to go through it with you. So we see Jesus tells him, let's go. And as they are on their way to Jairus' house, we see the third individual. Let's look at verse 25. It says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood of 12 years. You see, this woman is different. She's not crazy, running around, not in her right mind. She's not in a place of power. She's not in a place of respect. But she has, she's not a 12-year-old daughter either, but she has a 12-year-old problem. And we see she realizes the same thing that these other two men did. She needed to come to the feet of Jesus. And I think that's so important tonight to realize that no matter what you're going through, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what trial you think it, you can't get out of it, you can bring it to the feet of Jesus. That's what this woman realized. That's what the crazy man realized. That's what Jarius realized. And they all came to the feet of Jesus. So I want us to see tonight why this woman was so determined to get to Jesus. I'll tell you why. She was determined because she didn't want to go home with that same issue. She, she was done trying everything else. She said, I'm not going home until Jesus heals me of my issue. You see, every one of us are going through something. Every single one of us are going through a problem. Every single one of us are going through a trial. A preacher once said you're either in a trial, you're going through a trial, or you just came out of a trial. You see, every single one of us are going to go through something. And tonight I want to ask you this one question. What is your issue? What's your issue? What's your problem that you're facing with tonight? And you feel like you can't get out of it. You feel like there's no hope. Bring it to Jesus' feet like these three individuals did. And I want us to look at this story and see how this woman got rid of her issue so that we also can apply this to our own lives so that we can get rid of our issue. I want us to see the first thing is she attempted everything else. First thing is she attempted everything else. The Bible says in verse 26, and had suffered many things and of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather 
grew worse. You see, I, I always am amazed that we will try everything else before we try Jesus. You know, McDonald's comes out with a, a sandwich, you know, it's nasty, but we'll go and try it because McDonald's came out with another sandwich. Just today I tried a Chick-fil-A's new uh, pimento sandwich, you know, it wasn't the greatest thing on earth. It was decent, but you know, everybody's advertising it, telling you, you got to go try this sandwich. And you see, we can go and try different things, but we always leave Jesus for last. And we see that this woman, she had attempted everything else. She tried everything. She went to the doctors. She spent all that she had trying to fix her problems. And she realized that after everything she spent, she wasn't getting any better. She wasn't getting healed from her disease, but she knew that she could go to Jesus. I don't know what your trial is. I don't know what your issue is. I don't know what your problem is, but stop trying everything else. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, I'm, I've tried everything else. Then try Jesus. Amen. He's the one that can save you from your Amen. issue. He's the one that can change your life. So I want us to see she attempted everything else and nothing else will work. So try Jesus. He'll work. So we see she attempted everything else. Secondly, I want us to see she was aware of his activities. She was aware of his activities. Look at verse 27. It says, when she had heard of Jesus. When she had heard of Jesus. I don't think that uh, this woman had met Jesus before. Maybe she had, but I don't think she had. But the Bible does say that she had heard of Jesus. And I can just imagine as this woman with her disease for 12 years, she's hearing these stories about what Jesus has done. Oh, he fed the 5,000. Wow, what a miracle. Oh, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Man, that is so amazing. Oh, he healed the lepers from their sickness. Oh, Jesus can heal me from my sickness. I can just imagine all the stories that this woman has been hearing, and she's just getting so excited. Oh, I've tried this doctor. I've tried that doctor, but I haven't tried Jesus. I've heard about all the wonderful things he's done, and I'm going to go find him. I'm going to go try him because I believe that he can help me in my situation. You see, she wasn't just sitting around wondering, I wonder if Jesus is going to come to my house. No, she was aware of his activities. The Bible says that she went to him, and she went to find him. You see, she was aware of what Jesus was doing and she went to him. Maybe, maybe you have been trying everything else and you need to start realizing I need to get aware of Jesus' activities. I believe all of us have seen Jesus do some great things Amen. in our life, haven't we? Amen. I believe that when we got that $1.9 million for the building, we've Amen. seen Jesus do some great and mighty things. Amen. So Jesus can do that same thing in your life with your issue. But we need to be aware of what Jesus is doing. And we need to go to him and not just expect that Jesus is going to do everything we want when we're far away from him. Right. She was aware right. Of his activities. So we see she, was att she attempted everything else. She was aware of his activities. Number three, she was adamant of his ability. I want us to look at verse 28. It says, For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. You see, she was determined. She wasn't just saying, oh, I think Jesus can heal me. No, she was determined to get to Jesus. She was adamant that Jesus could heal her from her sickness. That's why she was coming to Jesus. That's why she was trying to get there. Uh, can you just imagine all the pain that she must have gone through? I, I don't know what she was dealing with, but many theologians think that she was probably crawling trying to get to Jesus. Can you imagine all the, all the pain she was in? But she didn't give up. She kept going because she knew if I could get to Jesus, if I can just touch his clothes, yeah. I can be healed. Amen. I don't know what you're going through, but if you can just get to Jesus, he can help you. Amen. I think of her perception that she might have had you know, there were so many things that people probably told her. I imagine people probably told her, hey, get out of here. Leave here, woman. Nobody wants to deal with you. Jesus doesn't want to heal you. And I can just imagine all the things that people would have said to her that probably could have made her say, oh, I don't think I can get to Jesus. But she didn't do that. She kept pushing. She kept being determined to get to Jesus. And I wonder this evening how many of us get so discouraged because we don't, we don't, Get, we're not determined to get to Jesus because we're worried about what our friends will think 
We're worried about what our families will say. We're worried about what Facebook and Instagram or whatever other social media there is out there, what they will say about us. Instead, we need to stop being worried about what people will think and we need to start being determined. I'm going to get to Jesus because he's the only one that can help me with my issue. That's what this woman realized. She realized nobody else is going to help me but Jesus. Sometimes we have to stop wondering what others are going to think about us, and we have to start determining to get to Jesus. So I want us to, I want us to see that she was, um, she was adamant about Jesus' ability. The last thing I want us to see is she was amazed at her recovery. And you see this word amazed. I, I even learned a little bit about this English word. We use it a lot of the times for everything. You know, man, I was amazed about that. But I read the, the definition of this, and it means surprised or at wonder. And I believe that she wasn't surprised that Jesus healed her. She was at wonder. She was at loss of words for how she had been healed. We see in verse 29, the Bible says, and straightway. That doesn't mean that, you know, in a little while, you know, maybe in a week or two weeks. No, no, straightway. It means right away she was healed. It says, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. You know, I, I began thinking about that, and I, I thought of, you know, the ads that we see on TV. You know, a lot of times they have those ads where they have this beautiful family. You know, they got the dad, the mom, the kids. They got the golden retriever on there. You know, I think it should be a labradoodle, but, you know, they got the golden retriever on there. And, you know, you know it's an ad because the children are obeying. Everything's going great, you know. And we see the dad's like, man, I tried this medication and every, all my worries disappeared. It was wonderful. You know, I'm losing weight. I'm looking good. I'm even getting a tan, you know, all this great stuff. And then, you know, that, that little voice pops up, you know, uh, side effects, possible side effects. You know, you could get a heart attack, you can get acne, you can get body odor, pink eye, and it starts giving you all this list of things and you start thinking, why would I ever take that medication? You see, this woman wasn't trying this medication and she was thinking, oh, you know, I think it might work. No, when Jesus healed her, there were no side effects. When Jesus healed her, it happened immediately. And that's what we have to realize is Jesus isn't just some medication that we go to the, to the hospital and say, oh, you know, I'm going to ask the doctor to give me something to help me. No, no, no. We can go to Jesus because he's the only one that can heal us from our issue. That's what this woman realized because she tried everything else. She, she'd done all the other things and she realized it's not working and I need to come to Jesus. That's why she was determined to get to Jesus. So we need to stop trying everything else and we need to start trying Jesus because he's the only one that can change our life. He's the only one that can change the issue that we're dealing with. I wonder if there's someone in the building tonight that is dealing with some issue, some problem. They feel like there's no hope. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's the one that can save you. He's the one that can help you with the issue that you're, that you're going through. So I encourage you tonight in the prayer time, come to Jesus. In your prayer time, leave your issue at Jesus' feet. Be like these three individuals and realize, hey, I can't do this on my own. I have tried everything else. I'm going to stop doing what I think can take away this issue, and I'm going to start coming to Jesus. I'm going to leave my issue at Jesus' feet. Be like this woman and realize that I'm going to leave church tonight with my issue at Jesus' feet and allow Him to change my life. What's your issue? Let's pray. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for this uh, great opportunity to be able to worship you. And I do pray and ask, O oh Lord, that you would just take this passage, that you would just work in our hearts and help us to realize no matter what problem, no matter what issue we are dealing with, that we can always come to you and you can take away our issues and take away our problems if we would just leave it at your feet. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I didn't even knew what, what book he was in. I was looking down at this passage, and I'm looking in Matthew 5, and I'm going, this isn't, this isn't what I, my Bible says. I started to check up on Sam, make sure he had the right Bible. Then I realized he was in Mark chapter 5. 
But uh, I, I was sitting there thinking, you know, it is the simplest biblical teaching and preaching that deals the most specifically with our life. There's no doubt if we took a survey in this room right now, if we were honest, every one of us could say, there are some things that I've been trying to solve on my own, or there's some things I'm carrying right now, or there's some questions that I have that I've been trying to get answered. And the truth is, I've done everything except put them at Jesus' feet. And I thought, why is it that we struggle so hard with that? And, and here's, what I, here's what I know in my own life. The devil always wants to create division between us and the Lord. He cannot change the relationship, right? He can't change the relationship. But he wants the fellowship to be at odds. And man, the devil will let you get mad at everything that God is attached to, no matter what it is. And this woman understood something. If I can just get to Jesus. You know, you say, I, I got to say the right things. I got to present myself properly. Here's a woman who had been sick for 12 years. She tried everything. The only thing she wanted to do was get to where Jesus was. The Bible says she touched him and virtue came out of him. I wrote, I wrote some things down. I've been in church. This is my ninth service. You say, preacher, you must really need a lot of preaching. And since Sunday, this is my ninth service. A demoniac, a daughter, and a damsel. Let me show you something. Sam, can I, can I show him something from the passage? You did a tremendous job preaching. But I want you to look at verse number 23. You'll remember the Bible says, you say, Pastor, this isn't, are we going to get two sermons? I hadn't spoke. I've been preached to. i got a lot to say, all right? Look in verse 23. Jarius is, is trying to bring his daughter to Jesus. You remember this? Sam hit it very well, all right? Verse 23. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I have marked in my Bible here. There is nothing that will drive us to Jesus any quicker than our children. My little daughter lieth at death. Please remember this. Anytime when you see Jesus doing something in, in Scripture, in the Word of God, it is always on purpose. He didn't, he didn't do things by accident. It is always on purpose. And it is always... An it is always done on purpose and with opportunity to teach. Who's with Jesus in this moment? Who's with him? Who's traveling with him? You guys know who it is. The disciples, right? They're following along and they're mad at him because they said, Jesus, who is it? You're asking who touched you. Look around. Everybody's with you. They're with him in the maniac, in the, uh, the maniac in the cemetery there. They're with him with Jairus' daughter. Now they're going to heal uh, Jairus' daughter. But I saw something tonight that I've never seen before in Scripture. The Bible says that Jesus is bringing these disciples along and he's teaching them something. Most of what Jesus did, most of what Jesus did was more about training the 12 than it was what he was trying to accomplish. And look what the Bible says about this woman. We see in verse 23 that Jairus says, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. Man, this is good. She says, A certain woman, verse 25, which had an issue of blood for 12 years, suffered many things, many physicians, spent all she had, and was nothing the better, but rather grew worse. Verse 28, For she said, If I may touch, I shall be whole. Shall be whole. She was looking for a physical healing. Look in verse 34. Look what he calls her. What's he call her? Daughter. Who's standing there watching this? The disciples. Here's a certain woman who needs a physical healing, but Jesus understood the problem was not physical, it was spiritual. And when she had the faith, the Bible says that she would be made whole. Jesus says in verse 34, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Stop for just a moment. Those disciples are standing there. They just heard Jairus say to Jesus, my daughter is about to die. There's a certain woman, no one knows her name, but Jesus calls her in front of those disciples, daughter. He heals her. What is he trying to tell the disciples? Exactly what Brother Sam was preaching. There's nothing that Jesus can't solve in, that, in your life. Well, what about death? We see in just a moment. God takes care, he takes care of that too. 
You see, the greatest need in our life is not physical. It's not emotional. It's not mental. The greatest need in every person's life is always spiritual. It's the work that Jesus is trying to do. Don't ever miss that. I saw that. I drew a line from daughter in verse 23 to daughter in verse 34. Demoniac, a daughter, and a damsel. Aren't you glad the story ends very well, doesn't it? <laughs> and straightway the damsel arose and walked. Aren't you thankful Jesus can answer prayer? Amen. Jesus can solve the problems. Right. Amen. Amen. I was good, Sam. I liked it. Man, I, he was getting on. He was about to preach there, man. He was letting it rip. I was about to give him some water, you know. He about earned some water up here. And so I appreciate it. Thank you, Sam, for that. Brother Tim, come if you would please be ready to share our prayer request this week. Preston, come along if you would please. And to be ready to share our missionary of the week. And we're going to take some time and pray together tonight. And uh, I want you to pray for the nation of Israel. Uh, I, uh, there's a biblical principle that God's given in his word. And until this point, our nation has always been on the right side of that equation. Amen. I will bless them that bless thee. I'll curse them that curse thee. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I, I struggle when there are people in positions of leadership in our nation who want to get on the other side of that equation. And listen, I, I, we ought to have compassion. Sure. But the best way to appreciate what you have is to realize what it's like if you don't have it. If you don't like America, go somewhere where they don't have freedom. Amen. Listen, I don't want anybody hurt. But I'm just telling you, uh, you know, we're living in a culture where people need to understand we are blessed in this nation. Yeah. If you don't believe me, just go somewhere else. And you'll find out very quickly how, how blessed we are. We need to pray for the nation of Israel. We need to pray that the lost will be saved. That somehow in this, the Lord can use something to get a hold of somebody's heart and life. No Christian ought to want anyone to die without Jesus Christ. But we need to be on the right side of this equation. And that's standing behind God's people. You say, well, there's a lot of folks in Israel who aren't doing what they aren't supposed to be. Well, that's true, but that's God's business. Right. Our job is to be right with the Lord, not right with them. So let's remember that. All right? right? Good. Preston, give us our Missionary of the Week. All right. Our Missionary of the Week is the Henry family, and they are missionaries to Argentina. And there's Brother Patrick and Miss Leslie, and they have four children, uh, Lily, Piper, Ivy, and Isla. Uh, and they have a couple praises. They just came off of an awesome summer. They had their, uh, they closed it off with their kids' festival, and they had fun face painting and uh, inflatables and different games that they could have for all the kids. And they had several visitors from the village that came, and they were able to invite many of those uh, people to church. So they're very thankful for that opportunity. And the other praise that they have, uh, a young man named Leandro is a Bible college student there, and he was able to per preach his first sermon there um, on a Sunday morning, and they were able to see God work through him and through that, and they're just very thankful for the opportunity they have to train these young men uh, and to watch them grow in him and his work Amen. and go out and do his work. Sure. Um, they do have a few requests. Uh, they are fixing to start an evangelistic campaign, so just pray that they see God work um, as they travel and preach the word, proclaim the gospel, and pray for these young men that they're training uh, that uh, God would protect them and provide for them as they go to do his work and uh, uh, work, do his work. Uh, and next you see uh, with their uh, info, they only have a phone number in their email. They're not on social media. So their phone number is 404-500-8750. And their email is p underscore 